<laughs> so the first season of Oz ended with a massive riot erupting in Emerald City as its climax, with CEOs being taken as hostages, and eventually the governor making the decision of having the prison stormed. Gunfire and smoke is everywhere, dead bodies all over, as most inmates duck and cover for their lives. By the time the first episode of the second season is over, months have passed and the prisoners are all transferred back into Oz, many of them having been in the general population or solitary confinement in the meantime. It kind of feels like a retcon in a way, with everything essentially back as it was before the riot. You get this with a lot of shows. In Better Call Saul, for example, the first season ended with Jimmy essentially becoming Saul Goodman, but at the start of season 2, things basically revert back again. It feels like with many shows, the creators are not sure whether they'll be greenlit for a subsequent season, so end their first seasons with open endings, but wrapping things up as well, and if the show does prove a hit, they more or less start again with the second season, only this time with a lot more confidence, skill and experience. But I've got nothing against the way Oz went about its quote-unquote retcon, because it did so in a way that felt authentic. In fact, practically the entire first episode is dedicated to the fallout of the riot, and this is something that continues on for the entire season. An investigation is conducted to find out who was at fault, and in some ways the first episode is a murder mystery, with the killing of one particular inmate bamboozling the investigator, who begins to suspect he was deliberately targeted rather than haphazardly shot. But eventually, the usual suspects all end up back in Oz, and we get continuations of beefs and tensions from season 1 carrying over, plus numerous new plot lines. For example, the son of the seasoned Italian mobster from the first season arrives at Emerald City, wanting to take over from his father's operation and avenge his death. There's continued tensions with Beecher and Schillinger, with the latter latching a dastardly plot to torture the former. I'm still not quite sure what he wanted out of all of that. Was the plan to make Beecher fall in love with another inmate and then have him heartbroken when the ruse is revealed? Seems a bit over the top and James Bond villainish. A new inmate arrives and claims he has sold drugs to the governor, prompting the governor to have to make a response. The warden's daughter is raped on the outside and one of the inmates knows who did it. Adebisi exchanges love letters with a woman on death row while having his connection with his homeland stimulated by a mysterious new inmate. Saeed battles a desire for freedom with his loyalty to his men when he is selected to be granted clemency, and Augustus becomes obsessed with escape after he has false hope of release dangled in front of him. There's a lot of different stuff happening. Season 2 is perhaps even more relentless in its pace than its predecessor, it just refuses to stop moving, sometimes to its own detriment. Like there was a scene where we learn a prominent character's wife commits suicide because of him, and you'd appreciate a moment just to swallow the gravitas of the situation, but the show just zips ahead to the next series of characters. But it comes with the territory, there is no time to rest in Oz, no time to let your guard down and be at ease from the tension. It's kind of cool and funny that there's so many principal inmates, but because they're all locked up together, you'll see major characters doing random things in the background while we're focusing on something else. We might be focusing on a love-struck Ryan O'Reilly, reminiscing about the nurse he's infatuated with, and Adebisi might be jiggling in the background to whatever he is listening to. There was a scene where McManus had loads of people in a meeting, and when it erupted into a shouting match and people started walking out, in the background Saeed walks up to McManus and you can just make out him saying something like, this is why I don't come to your meetings. I love things like that. It makes the world of Emerald City feel more real, that things are happening in the background, actors aren't breaking character. You get a feel that even though Oz started firing on all cylinders, the showrunners are even more confident going into season 2 and it shows in the content. The second season is so violent and horrific that even the opening credits are not family friendly. A man half conscious gets raped, another man on a relatively short sentence is blackmailed by a CO with either death or getting life in prison, a paedophile is crucified, an inmate has both his arms and legs broken, a group kill a man and put his body on display just to show the prison they still pack a punch. A CO has his eyes taken out by a man trying to prove his loyalty to his gang leader, and all sorts of horrible gross stuff. And even the happy endings, the small victories that exist in Oz, are intentionally spat back in your face. Like one inmate whose poetry causes a stir on the outside, his works are published in a book, 
and eventually there is enough momentum to get him an early release, but shortly after becoming a free man he kills a guy and ends up right back in Oz. It's like a sick joke, and even the humour in this show is depraved. Like one scene where Schillinger, played by J.K. Simmons, mocks Beecher because his wife died. The way he laughed was so funny and contagious, on par with his famous cackle from the Spider-Man movie. Oh, I heard your wife offed herself. <laughs> And then you realise you're laughing with a man, roasting another man whose wife took her own life. Sometimes it does feel like there's a little too much going on. I'm not saying I want to see inmates reading in the library or playing cards for 20 years, but it does feel like someone is getting killed every 10 minutes. Some of these storylines are wild. One with two old guys digging a tunnel to escape, leading to a scene straight out of The Great Escape where a tunnel almost explosively caves in. Overall, I would say this season is better than the first, although I've only just watched it, so it's still digesting. It is similar in quality, but just about has the edge, though the right stuff from the first season was riveting stuff. Onwards to season three. 